All right, since I'm not here, here's the video of me going over the review for functions. So the first slide, nothing to do. Second slide is about proportional relationships. So let's look and see what proportional relationships are. The first thing you need to do is you need to remember that proportional relationships can also be called multiplicative. We've learned this word before. Multiplicative means you multiply. Multiply. Proportional relationships are represented by y equals mx. And m is the constant of proportionality. You need to know these words that I've underlined. Multiplicative means multiply. You need to know y equals mx. And you need to know that m is the constant of proportionality or the slope. All right. So on the back of this one is the brain dump. So you can pause here and write this or it is on your slides. So go ahead and record that. I'm not recording. Sorry, I'm recording. Go ahead and write that. Um, and when we come back, when I come back, sorry, then um, I will check to make sure you wrote it. If you wrote it, you get a ticket. If not, you don't. So next one is example one. So we're going to look at this table. Let's read the question first. The table of values represents a proportional relationship between X, number of cupcakes, and Y, the total cost. What is the slope of the line that represents this relationship? So the slope is just what are we multiplying by to get to our number? So 1 times what number is 3? 1 times what number is 3? So that's going to be times 3. 2 times 3 is 6. And 3 times 3 is 9. Okay? So that means that our slope here is 3. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to write an equation to represent the proportional relationships on the table shown. So remember, our thing is y equals mx, where m equals slope. So if our slope is 3, our formula is y equals 3x. All right. So on the next example, example 2, the table of values represents a proportional relationship between x and y. What is the slope of the line that represents this relationship? Remember, this one are we looks like we're dividing, right? But remember, dividing is the same thing as multiplying by a fraction. So what am I multiplying 2 by, that's a fraction, to get to 1? I'll give you a hint. It's going to be 1 over a number. So what am I dividing by to get to 1? I'm dividing by 2. So my answer is multiplying by 1 half. So what's my slope? My slope is 1 half. So my formula is going to be y equals 1 half x. Okay, so this is 1 times 1 half, and this is times 1 half as well. All right, so if you have any questions on this, let me know when I come back. But so far, pretty straightforward, right? We're just multiplying numbers to get to x. So, I mean, to get to y. So we multiply numbers by x to get to y. All right, number three, Miguel makes all right, so this is a word problem. So Miguel makes bags. He can make eight bags with two yards of fabric. Write an equation to represent yards of fabric X needed. So what we're going to actually do, I wrote this here, but let's make it into a table like we've been seeing here, X and Y. So where X is two yards of fabric, where X is two, Y is eight. So what am I multiplying two by to get to eight? Hopefully you said four. So our formula is going to be Y equals... 4x. Okay, does that make sense? Number four on the back here. On Thursday, Jessica tutored for three hours and earned $24. On Friday, Jessica tutored for four hours and earned $32. On Saturday, Jessica tutored for six hours and earned $48. Write an equation to represent her earnings if x represents her hours and y represents her earnings. So remember, we're going to set that table up again like we did on the last one. It doesn't have to be very straightforward, right? It doesn't have to be very neat. So X is the number of hours. So she worked three hours and she got $24, okay? She worked six hours and she got $48. She worked four hours and got $32. Sorry, I did it out of order, but it's the same idea. So what number times three gives me 24? What number times 3 gives me 24? Hopefully you said 8. 
So that means that our formula is y equals 8x. All right, the next examples we're doing are all you're doing is telling me the slope of the equation. So I'm going to tell you a and b, and you're going to do c by yourself. This one's hard. Actually, we're going to do a and c, and you're going to do b by yourself. So slope for this one, m equals 3. Slope for this c here, remember, when there it doesn't look like there's a number in front of it, it's actually a 1. So m equals 1. Easy peasy. All right. So now for this one, remember, we're going to only do A together and we're going to, you're going to do B separate. So let me stop right here and I'll be right back. So any proportional relationship is going to start at zero because zero times zero is zero or zero times anything is zero. So it's going to have to cross through zero. So remember, slope is rise over run. So the change in X I mean, sorry, change in y over x, okay? The change in x, sorry. Change x, okay? So we got a point here, and then we have another point right here. I know on your papers it's a little bit harder to see because it's so small, but I think you will be okay, okay? So we're going to go up and over. So we went up how many? One, two, three. So our top number is three. And we went over how many? One, two, three, four. So my slope is three over four because I went up one, two, three, and over one, two, three, four. So that's rise. I'll do arrows for you. Rise over run. Okay. So do number uh, letter B by yourself, and I will check uh, check that on the next day I come back. Okay, uh, we already did the back of that one. So now we are on graph the line that passes through. Oh, let me zoom out some more. Sorry. There we go. Graph the line that passes through negative 6, negative 4, and has a slope of 2 thirds. Plot at least two additional points that lie on the line. So we have to plot this point. Okay. And it has a slope of 2 thirds. So we need those two numbers. And we need to plot at least two more. So we're going to have a total of three plots. Okay. Now. Remember my dance. Let's see if I can get, oh, I'm upside down, so maybe not. All right, remember my dance. X, Y, right? X, X goes this way. Y goes this way, okay? So keep that in mind moving forward. So negative 6 is X, and Y is negative 4. So we're going to go over to negative 6 and down to negative 4. So our First point is going to be right here. Okay, so we got one point done. The next thing we're doing is slope, rise over run. So rise over run. So how many did we go up? Two. And how many did we go down? I mean, across. Three. So from here, we're going to count up one, two, and over one, two, three. Okay, let me zoom in a little bit more for you to see that. Okay, so from this point, we're going to do this point. So we went up, one, two, and over, one, two, three. So we're going to do it again. We're going to go up, one, two, and over, one, two, three. So our next dot is going to be there. Now, am I done? You should be saying to yourself, no, Miss Foley, you're not done. So what do you need to do? Draw straight lines through these three dots, and then you're done. Ignore that. That was my mistake. All right. All right. Next thing is you're going to graph the line that represents y equals 2x. Plot at least three points on this line. Okay. So where y is 0, what is x going to be? Think about it, where y is 0. So if we set up an equation like this, where y is 0, we're going to divide by 2. What's 0 divided by 2? 0. So x equals 0. Okay? So we're able to start at 0, 0. So go ahead and put a plot on the origin. So that's one point none. 
The next thing you're going to do is, okay, where x is 1, what is y going to be? So if our formula is this, all we're going to do is say 2 times 1 is what number? Good, 2. So where x is 1, y equals 2. So we're going to go over 1, up 2. Now, there is an easier way to do this if you don't want to do the multiply way. Guess what you can do? We know our slope is 2. What does that mean? 2 over 1. What does that mean? That means we go up 2 and to the right 1. So we're going to go up 2 over 1. So let's do that next point this way. So we're going to go up 2 from this point, 1, 2, over 1 to here. So that is going to be my, num my line, and I'm going to just draw a connecting line between them. Hopefully that makes sense. If not, we will review later. Um, okay, next one. Write an equation of a line representing the same relationship between the line. Between, let me read re that, sorry. Write the equation of the line representing the same relationship shown on the graph. So we need to pick two points. So let's go ahead and pick the origin. Since we're here, let me use a different color pen because maybe it'll be easier for you to see. So here, okay. We're going to let me turn the light on because my light turned off. Does that help? I think so. Then we're going to find another point here. Okay. So the first thing we got to do is find M. M, remember, is the slope. So what does M equal here? We went up how many? One, two, three. So let's go ahead and put three down. And we went over how many? One. So three over one. Three over one, remember, is the same thing as saying three. Remember, the formula we're working with is y equals mx. So y equals, what's our m? 3x. So our answer is y equals 3x. Okay, so that's all the multiplicative stuff. Remember, multiplicative, what a fun word to say. The next thing we're going to do is additive. So multiplicative is multiplying. So what do you think additive is? Recalling. I'm sorry, recall, additive is adding, represented by this equation, y equals x plus b. Remember, b represents where it crosses the y at. So, for example, before we move on anywhere, let's draw this. So, which one is your x-axis, the one that goes left to right, or the one that goes uh, up and down, your x-axis? Hopefully, you said left to right. And remember, y is this one. Remember the dance. Remember the dance. If you need to do it, please do it, okay? No one's stopping you, all right? So why? So if my line passes through this point right here, and this is, uh, let's say, 4, my B is going to equal 4, okay? So if this is positive 4, it crosses at the y-intercept, which is here, my B is going to equal 4. You're going to learn more about this next year in 8th grade, so just prepare yourselves. But for now, we're just going to break it, keep it simple. So here is this. Write this down. You have it on your slide, so write it down, and we will give you, uh, I will give you tickets when I come back. Remind me. So let's look at the table here. The table represents a the relationship between X and Y. So we're going to determine the Y-intercept of the line that passes through the points, and um, represented by the values in this table. So wherever x is 0, think about it. If I have a, a coordinate plane where x is 0 is going to be my y-intercept. Okay, so what's my y-intercept? 3. Now, if we were to write an equation to represent this, we're going to say y equals x plus 3. Because what can I add to all these numbers to get to my y? So 0 plus 3 is 3. 2 plus 3 is 5. 3 plus 3 is 6. Okay, so you're, this is what you're, you're saying. You're saying x plus 3 gives me my y. So these are called function tables, okay? So number 2. Let's look at this table again. Do I want to look at this table? Mm, yeah, let's do it. So you're going to determine the y values. So this one, do you notice that your x is bigger than your y? So even though it's called additive, remember, adding is the same thing as 
sorry, subtracting is the same thing as adding a negative. I'm going to repeat that so I don't mess it up this time. Subtracting is the same thing as adding a negative. So what am I doing to five to get to four? Subtract one, good. One minus one is zero. Negative two minus one is negative three. So what's my y-intercept here? Negative one. So now we're gonna write an equation that represents x and y. It's gonna be y equals x minus one. So y equals x minus 1. All right, example number three here. A movie theater is offering a coupon for $3 off each regular ticket. Let x represent a regular ticket and y represent the discount price. Write an equation to represent the relationship between a regular ticket price x and the discounted ticket price y. Now, this is a lot of words. Okay, this is a lot of words, so let's break it down. $3 off of a regular ticket. X represents a regular ticket. Y represents a discounted. Okay, so we have regular ticket, discounted ticket. So we're working with those things. Okay, say so this just repeats this, except for it tells you what to do. This just repeats this, except for it tells you what to do. Meaning, what are you writing? You're writing an equation. Remember, equations are always going to have this Y equals... And if you're subtracting $3, so you're taking $3 off, you're going to say X minus what number? You're subtracting 3, so therefore it's going to be X minus 3. So Y equals X minus 3. Okay? Number 4 example. Joey's a cab driver. <coughs> Excuse me. For his first trip, he travels 8 miles and earns $10. For his second trip, he travels 11 miles and gets $13. For his third trip, he travels 19 and gets 21. So we're going to write an equation. But before that, we're going to go back to what we did on that one for the multiplication, um, multiplicative relationship. But we're just going to make it a same table just so that it's easier for us. So X is the number of miles. So at 8 miles, he went, he got $10. Okay. At 11 miles, he got $13. At 19 miles, he got $21. So 8 plus what gives me 10? 8 plus 2. Okay. Does 11 plus 2 give me 13? Yes. Does 19 plus 2 give me 21? Yes. So y equals x plus 2. So set up this table if you need to. It will help you on your quiz and on your SOL test. This right here is going to help you solve so many things. All right, we're only going to do A together on this one. So write an equation that represents each graph shown. So this one, we don't even have to count. We see that it crosses at what number? Negative 2. Good. So y equals x minus 2. So y equals x minus 2 because our b, x plus b, b equals negative 2. Okay? Can't see that. Let me put it back on the screen. So y equals x plus b, b equals negative 2 because that's the y-intercept, and then so y equals x minus 2. So over here, you're looking at the y-intercept, the y-intercept. So where does it cross y? And this should be what your formula looks like. All right. So now let's do this one together. You're going to graph a line that passes through negative 2, 3. So negative 2, let's go ahead and plot that. Positive 3. And it has a y-intercept of 5. So it crosses the y at 5. So we can just plot that. So we need to give at least two additional points that lie on this line. Okay, so what are, what are we adding to the number to get to 5? We're adding 5. But we don't really have much room up top, so we're going to go down. Okay, so 3, we have to, this is going to get confusing, so just bear with me, okay? So 0, x equals 0, 
set up a table over here. Y is 5. Then at uh, 3, x equals negative 2. It equals 3. Okay, so we're adding 5. So let's pick another number. Let's see. Let's do negative 1. Negative 1 plus 5 is what? Hopefully you said 4. Okay. And then 1 plus 5. So x plus 5 is 6. So we're going to go up here. Okay. So here's a little bit of a hint too. When we're doing these problems, the slope is going to be 1 over 1 unless it tells you otherwise. So a slope of 1 over 1 is a slope of 1. So that means you go up 1 and over 1. So if you see here, I went up 1 and over 1. Up 1, over 1. Up 1, over 1. So for this one, you need to have four plots pointed. Boop, 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 boop. All right. So this one, I'm not going to help you. All I'm going to do is to remind you that um, this is your y-intercept and that your slope is going to be 1. So that means you're going up 1 and over 1. Oh, up 1 and to the right one from that point. All right. On the next one, same deal. Not helping you because it's the same idea that we did earlier. Let me double check. Yep. Where you're going to plot this point, and then you're going to plot this point, and then you need to plot two other points. You're going to have four total points here. Four, four total points plotted. Okay. So four total points. So remember what all these words mean. This one, let's see, is there another one? All right, this one I'll, I'll tell you. So where does it cross the y-intercept at? Negative 4. So y equals x minus 4. That's simple. Easy peasy. Next thing we're going to be doing is we're going to be making connections. So which of these tables represents the values represented by the equation y equals 3x. Remember, m equals slope. So our m here is 3. So 3 times x is going to give me y. So 0 times 3 gives me 0. That's true. 0 times 3, 1 times 3 gives me 4. Is that true? No. So that's not our answer. This one, 1 times 3 gives me 3. That's true. 2 times 3 gives me 5. Nope, that's not true. Okay, next one. 2 times 3 gives me 6. Yep. 4 times 3 gives me 12. Yep. So C is your answer, but let's double check all of our answers before we move on, just so that we're being good test takers. 0 times 3 is 0. That's true. 2 times 3 is 3. That's not true. So it's not D. So our answer for this one is C. Give you At any moment, if I'm going over this too fast, you can always pause it um, and copy it down and then listen to my explanation later. All right. So this one is difficult, but that's okay because we got this. Um, Luis and Jen, Jenny are, uh, each wrote an equation to represent the linear function graph. So these are called linear functions. Luis's answer is y equals 2x, and Ginny's answer is x plus 2, which is correct. Explain your answer. So I'm going to just circle this one. I'm not going to give you too much detail on that. Besides, think about what plus 2, what positive 2 y-intercept means. Think about what that means. So our b is 2, okay? Okay. So our b is 2. So our formula is going to look something like y equals x plus b. Or it could look like y equals mx. So are we saying it has a slope of 2, meaning it goes up 2 and over 1? So the point would be here. Or are we saying that we're adding 2? So just keep that in mind as we move forward. 
All right, so now we're going to match which forms match match each representation with an equation. So we're going to use all, not all of these. We're going to have one left over. So let's look and see. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit so we can see it better. The bakery uses three cups of flour for each of their sheet cakes. Let X represent the number of cakes and Y represent the number of flowers. So let's think about it. We'll set it up like this so that we could think about what it's asking us. So it uses three cups of flour. So Y is our flour. So if we use three cups of flour, X is going to be our number of cake. So one cake. So three plus or times something gives me three. So let's think about it. If we're making two cakes, how many, how many cups of flour are we going to need? Are we multiplying and saying we need six cups? Or are we adding two and saying we need three? Hopefully you said we're multiplying. Okay, so six. So our formula for this one's going to be, our equation for this one's going to be y equals 3x. And if you see at the bottom, that is an option. So the types of questions that's, there you go, sorry. The types of questions that you're going to see like this are going to be things like, um, are going to be things like, the click and drag options on your SOL test. So just be prepared for that. So for this one, minus two and minus one, what number can I get to, or can I multiply to get to negative one? So the negatives are a little hard to work with, right? So if we don't feel comfortable working with negatives, guess what we have down here? We have a positive two and a positive four. So let's work with the two. What number times two is going to give me one. Remember, we said this, that dividing by a number, so if we divide by a number, divide by number, then it's the same thing. So that's the same thing as multiplying by the fraction. Okay? So what's the fraction we're working with here? What did we divide by? We divided by... Hopefully you said two, so we add a one on top, and so our equation it was going to be y equals one half x. Is that an answer down here? Absolutely. So go ahead and mark it out. So now we're working with two. You have a 50-50 chance of getting this one done by yourself. All I'm going to say is look at that negative three and think about what that negative three means for your equations. All right, so this one's a little bit more complicated. So I think I have, there's another option. Let me double check here. For a, oh, we're almost done. So this one's a little complicated. So you have to pick all the ones that represent the same. So let's look at the tables and the graphs and figure out what's going on. Because these, we can just plot these. We can just plot them using our X and Y technique, okay? So x is negative 1, so we go over to negative 1, and we go up to positive 3. Is that a point that's on there? Nope. Now let's go here. We go to negative 1 up to 3. Is that a point that's on there? Yes, it is. So we're looking at these. This one's looking promising. Let's double check on this one before we move on, though. So we have 1 up 4. Nope, that's not one. One up four. Nope, that's not one. So this one we know is not an answer, okay? Which means that we also are not using this as our answer because it does not fit here. This one fits all of them. We can say negative one, positive three, okay? Two, positive six. Check, check. Three, positive seven. Great. Five, nine. Great. Okay, so this is one. This is one. Now we got to figure out which word matches. So let's read. Juan makes friendship bracelets. He puts four charms on each bracelet. Versus, Helen pays a weekly fee of $4 to a dog walking service. They walk her dog twice a week. Each additional cost costs $1. Okay, so the weekly fee 
So this one, let's think about what that means. So if Juan makes one bracelet, he needs four charms. If he makes two bracelets, he needs how many charms? Hopefully you said eight. Three times four is 12. So this is the, this is the route you're going on here. So you're multiplying. So we know this one's not our answer. But we're good test takers, so what we're going to do is we're going to double check. So she starts the week. It's a weekly fee, okay? Meaning that she's starting at where her, she no matter what, on every week she's paying $4. So we're saying zero and four, okay? Then we're going to say one. So if she does one week, or, wow, sorry, I can't think. One if, if she has the people walk her dog once, so we're going to add four to that, and we're going to have five. She has them walk two. We're going to add four, and we're going to get six. So is two and six a number that's up here? Yep. So Helen is our answer. So the first, the second, and the second is what we're working with. This one is one of the, excuse me, one of the more complicated questions that you're going to have. Okay? And it's okay. So just take your time through it. Start with the tables and the graphs, and then work on this. So plot the points, because this is X and this is Y. Remember our dance, X and Y, so you can figure it out. Okay? And last one. Select the following that best represents the statement. Kathy has $3 in the bank and deposits $1 every day. Let X represent the number of days and Y represent the total number in the bank. So think about it. She's putting $1 every day. Is she starting at negative $3? Or is she starting at positive $3? Good. She's starting at positive 3. So this one is looking like a good option for us. Okay. So if X is 3... Y is going to be 9. Does that sound like that's right? Where X is 3, Y is 9. Does that make sense? No, it does not make sense. Go ahead and mark that out. So let's think about what this means. Remember, if it crosses at, the, at a Y axis that's not 0, we know it's not this. Okay? This one has no, it crosses at the origin. Crosses at origin. Okay. So this one, neither one of these crosses the origin. So we know that this is not true. Okay. We know this isn't true because she doesn't start at negative three. Or she doesn't start at in the in debt at, at the bank. She has three dollars. Here, zero plus three. Let's think about it. Zero plus three. Yeah, that makes sense. Then on the fifth day, she's gonna have eight, because we're gonna say five plus three is eight. So this one's correct. Okay. And then we're adding three. So it's this one. So those are your three options there. Sorry, this is so long, but this is the best way we could do it since I'm not going to be here. So bye. See you soon.